The way the XT series started was really for the love of mechanical dials. It really is very much um, a camera for photography purists. It's perfect for storytelling, for you to focus on taking photos. You just need to hold the body and you take one look on top what your settings are mechanically and you can go on with the shoot. I've contacted uh, a talent uh, Today we are going to go in to see you know, what kind of things we collectively throw away as a society rather than as an individual. My name is Brian. I work full-time in a family-owned business, Ace Recycle Trading, and I do own a disposal service company, Earth Recycling Services. What we do usually every week, so all these uh, uncles and aunties, they will collect everything. If there are people like clearing these items, then they will take it from maybe like factories or anyone who just dumped the stuff uh, underneath, the, underneath the HDB. So those are the true Garangunis. We basically function as a middleman between the Garangunis and the bigger factories. Nobody knows me, knows my real name. They know me by Xiao Ti. Oh, Lao Pan Tao Ge Kian. Brian is really the star here. The minute he gets in, everyone's so enthusiastic. They've been waiting for him. They're just like going for the kill. I initially, when I arrived, I thought that I would do this on the 816 um, because you know it just looks like there's so many things. Uh, but I realized that it's too wide, so I'm going to just stick with the Prime 33. Uh, that's nooks and crannies that I can squeeze myself into. And also it's um, a lot of human activity. So it's quite nice when it's a bit tighter for framing or people moving within the frame. We have uh, the speed setting on the right hand. You adjust the ISO on the left and then you have the aperture ring on the lens itself. It's like using a film camera where you can manually uh, turn the dials in this triangular format. You really feel like you're controlling the light. You know, you are controlling how the shutter clicks. You are playing a piano where you have all the keys in hands and you know where your fingers are supposed to go. The camera becomes part of your body. You, are, you and your camera are the team. And you go in and you can just put your best effort. It's like riding a bicycle. You pick it up and you go. So I love that even though it's digitally improved, the sensors have improved, I, in a way, can still ride that same bicycle over and over again, you know, as I have been doing for the last 20 years. My father. Yeah. Hi, uncle. So some of the trash collectors have already sorted out the items. They've dismantled them so that they can sell it for more money in the same bag. As Brian's dad explains to me, this uncle is a, has been a customer for the last 15 years and he knows exactly what to collect. He's got a bag of uh, copper here that's um, 80 kilograms. Alright, this is a nice shot where Brian is walking alongside his father. Brian's dad giving him some gentle guidance. I'm sure Brian doesn't need it but it's just still lovely to see. Ni hao! Ni se bang mang Brian ma hai se ni gan hanmen zuo gong? Look at his face. I'm walking around just to see what other angles I can get. But I'm moving a bit slowly because I'm not sure if everybody would like for me to photograph them handling junk. This man has very gamely um, agreed to pose for me in front of his items. Uh, okay, I'll show you a Okay. Okay, Uncle. Where did you get them from? I was the How much are cables going for? Uh, $1.90 today. Per kilo. Per kilo, yeah. That's a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. We usually collect papers like books magazines. We have like coppers, aluminum, cable wires, yeah. and stainless steel metal. So CDs is only like 10 cents per kg. The higher end, it would be coppers like this one. So it would be uh, $8.10 10 cent per kg. It's actually harder to get copper yeah. because you know the, the wires that we use, yeah. they actually have to individually like shred with the pen knife 
to retrieve the copper from the wire. There are lesser and lesser garanguni. I hope that this sort of like this part of the culture in Singapore would never sort of like die off because it's really fascinating to see and also it helps to give all these like elderly uh, something to do. Like. This is what? For them, it's really to, for, to kill time. Some of them really do need money, but some of them really just do it for, to have some sort of like income and also to exercise. This is the champion uncle with all the good stuff. <laughs> they are children, they are adults now and probably have their own family. So they don't really have time to spend with the family. That's why that's what they do and then they have sort of like a small community whereby you know they can chit chat on a weekly basis, come down, have a little bit of money um, to get through their week. Such a nice smile he's got. Not toes out. I'm trying to get a wider lens. Which is the 816, so that I can sort of get all the trash in frame. I feel like I'm missing some, uh, I'm missing a lot of great composition, like two walls for me to shoot. I think there are a lot of issues that we can see out of this trash, um, that we can see smaller stories coming out within it. The careful placement of including something at the corner of the image or the careful way of cutting an object off. Layer the train of thought in, layer the objects, the content in. You hope everything will be perfect and you move around until things become perfect. So it's like a stroke of luck or it's um, hard work. Life can actually fall in place so perfectly. Okay, we're going back to Brian's office now. The issues of sustainability, it's a topic that I feel deeply about. When we do photograph topics that are close to our hearts, um, we usually do better, that's where your interest lies. I want to focus more on telling these stories trying to persuade minimal consumption or the reduction of consumption. For all the collectors, uh, collector items like that, right? Yeah. So what we do is we, we then now go and segregate. This is our disposal service. Uh, okay. And then we will send it off to uh, Indonesia. Okay. These are all our stockpiles. So we actually have like iron, speakers, this kind of thing. We do have a lot of customers who ask us like, oh, why, do you, why are you charging us money? to like throw our item. We are giving you the items, right? You Garanguni, you should take it for free. But as a part of disposal service, I think it's really important for people to consider sort of like our operating costs, transportation, salary, dismantling, you know. What we are doing is actually just to reduce wastage as much as possible for all these items, then we will try to recycle by like exporting them out. I wouldn't say that I'm here to save the world because then I, I would seem very fake. Uh. At the end of the day, it's all really profit margin based and we try to salvage as much uh, recyclables as much as possible. Users who were shooting film before uh, would find this interface familiar and that's also the reason why I actually switched to the XT series back in the day. Because I started shooting with the FE2 and F3, that system of operating the dials, it has been learned, it has been reenacted, and my body has absorbed. I used the X-T2 very extensively and of course I have the X-T3. I skipped the X-T4 and now I'm really looking forward to have my own version of the X-T5 because of the 40 megapixel uh, sensor. Wow, I'm going to talk about two kilos. Can you do it? Yes. Can you do it? Yes. 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 Yes.